properly, I think. Um, wow, really windy today. I have closed the door properly. It looks like it's slightly open. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna try and teach you guys my way at least in eco driving. What was that sound? I think it was the generator for the refrigerated, refreezed goods I have. <clears throat> so you see I am engine braking here and using the retarder really early. Now I have to push the foot brake though, so I should have been earlier even on that. And going in roundabouts, you wanna go like really give space to everybody like that, now they can pass me there easily. So this is a Scania G490. Awesome truck, loving these machines. And in this one, you'd want to set the uh, gearing mode here to automatic echo, i.e. if it has that on the scanning, and then you just push this like that, and you get the echo. And you can also always help the engine, you know, gear by yourself, up and down, and you have the manual button here. Um, it can be good to help the engine. This Scanias have really powerful torque, so you want to take advantage of the torque and use the 1000 to 1500 RPMs and try and keep it in between there. Um, and also make sure you have the exhaust brake switch here pushed on. On the Volvos, you have to have the um, I shift in E mode, not the P program mode. fixed at the rails now also there was somebody drove into those rails earlier so we're now gonna go right across Stockholm on the Essinge laden there over to the other side to Bromma and deliver there to a huge store have the whole truck and trailer to that place it takes about 40 minutes here from Jordbro which is uh, Southeast of Stockholm, we are going to go northwest through the beautiful Stockholm um, So this video should be about eco driving huh? now. I'm gonna really try and focus this time and Not wander off and talk about other stuff But so yeah, the Volvos, you have to have the I shift in E mode, not the P program mode or anything else. E mode or E plus. And uh, also on the Volvos, you can push it back to go into manual. Now, you should never turn it into neutral and echo roll by yourself. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the gearbox might not get the lubrication it needs then. So only let the truck do that by itself, it, if it wants the echo roll then, then you can let it do that. On the Scanias I do not ha know how to turn off the echo roll, if any of, of you know, please um, tell me. And also my, my throat is a little bit bad right now, so it's kind of hard for me to talk, so I'm gonna try and keep it down. So here I know I have, what is this noise? It's like wind coming in here. Very strange. I think somebody have broken this door. Because it is, it is locked, yeah, it's locked, it's in the... But anyway, so here is a little downhill, release the gas a bit too early there. Now the engine, it geared down to 11th gear, it doesn't need to do that. Because I know it doesn't need to do that, it's more economical for the engine to stay in 12th gear. So I pulled it up and I pushed the manual. Now I can't forget to push it back to automatic though. 
But so now here's the downhill now we can just release the gas. We're in 74 kilometers an hour. What is that noise? Oh well, um, this is a 4.5 meter high truck. And here's the vehicle. Let's see if it's connected. Yeah, it's connected. There we go, 4 liters. Holy shit, that's very good economy. I actually, I should have taken a picture, but if I manage to next time get into that new generation Scalia, I will take a picture of that and put it on my Instagram, I think. But I managed to uh, see a driver from the GKT, those long, very long trailers. And I asked him if I could, uh, you know, just jump into the cab and take a look at that beautiful new Scania generation. And it was a dream come true, man. It was really awesome checking that thing out. I uh, love that new generation scan. I can't wait to drive it eventually. I will definitely make a video then. So yeah, uh, that truck, the new generation Scania, he drove with those long, long trailers. It's like a trailer like this one to the left, but just one long semi-trailer. I think it's like 40 pallet trailer. It's the longest trailer you can drive and they are here. They are loaded here in Sweden at least. Uh, so the GKT guys, they drive those. Now we have an uphill, we want to increase the speed early, I uh, should have increased it earlier there, but I talked. We are currently weighing uh, 20 tons in the truck and 20 tons in the trailer, so that's 40 tons. So we don't have much load. So I'm gonna try and put it into 11th gear here. You can see the Scania torque kicking in, no problem. So yeah, that new Scania generation with that trailer, fully loaded, he says it only takes 3 liters every 10 kilometers. That's really good fuel economy. Revolutionary good, I think. Uh, running on the fossil free, uh, environmental friendly diesel HVO 100, then you have a really good truck, an excellent and eco-friendly truck. Boy, what is that noise? Can you guys hear that? It's like wind noise coming here, very loud. It wasn't like that the last time I drove this Scania. This one is, I think, 2015, because it doesn't have this echo roll feature where it turns into neutral as soon as you release the gas. So this one is a little bit older. It's gone 360,000 kilometers. And I think the... Um, mileage here must be broken. There's that GKT, but it's not that one I talked about. Holy crap. Just went off to the shoulder there. Okay, I gotta focus. Where is my focus anyway? Oh, it is working. It's taking four liters. I think because maybe the last time I drove this truck, it was only with the truck, not with the trailer, so it's taking a little bit less fuel than. Otherwise, these are at like 4.5, 4 to 4.5 liters. So now I pushed off the uh, cruise control very early, so now we're in 73 here. 72 actually. Just uh, cruising down, gaining speed as we go, and driving very eco friendly here. I mean, doing this kind of eco driving, it, it saves about, uh, I don't know, at least 20% fuel. Like, imagine how much money that is a year. That's like, I mean, these trucks cost in fuel, I think, I don't know, at least 200,000 kroner. That's like at least $30,000 a year in fuel. And if you if you decrease that by 20%, imagine how much money you will save. That's like 40,000 Swedish kroner. That's like five thousand dollars just by driving economically and uh, also you of course save a lot on the nature and uh, stuff so you know somebody got to do this job uh, 
and it might as well be you who eco drive then so you know I, I've been thinking like I don't want to work as a truck driver because trucks are so bad for the environment and I care about it I don't know. Um, but I, I reckon if somebody I mean somebody else then would have taken this job and probably would have not driven economically like I am doing you know. It's one way to think about it. Of course you don't want to idle for too long as well. Although this truck, it has the refrigerator connected to the idling, to the engine. So you need to have the idle on for the refrigerator to work. And now I released cruise control. And just cruising down here. 78 kilometers an hour, 79, it's a little bit downhill, 80, 81, looking at the tackle meter up there, 82, So next week I'm going on vacation to Åland Islands where my mother is from. It's an island between Sweden and Finland. I'm gonna go there for a week with my girlfriend and just chill and relax and unwind. And hopefully I'll feel better. I don't know. If, if I don't do too much work there on the summer cabin I have. Gotta mow the grass. We have a huge garden. It's like extremely it's like a real pearl we got in there in the woods it's totally quiet like no neighbors and uh, no electricity no water just you and the nature it's lovely I love it and I and we have a little motorboat so we can go fishing and it's just absolutely fantastic love that place Although really badly, my uh, girlfriend is allergic to cats, and my mother is like in love with cats. So, and now you see I have 12 gear, 1000 RPMs, no problem. This Scania has a really powerful torque, so... At least 900 RPMs and you're good to go. Even a little bit of downhill, it's no problem for these Scanias. Now we have a little downhill here, so I'm in 65, rolling up to 68 now. And 70. And now we can just engage the um, cruise control, I think so. So, um, yeah, when, when you release the gas, it takes no fuel. When you're in neutral, it rolls faster, but it takes a tiny, tiny amount of fuel to keep the engine just running around. So, echo rolling in neutral is really efficient too, if you didn't know. Now I have it in manual mode, because I don't trust this gearbox uh, on this older Scania 2015. The 2016 Scania's, they have a lot better engine uh, or a gearbox uh, modification or what to say oh, my uh, neck hurts a bit I'm gonna rest it on the neck rest here uh, I, get, I get a bit pain in the neck filming for you guys because I want to keep the camera steady I don't want to you know, relax and I'll be all over like this and you'll be all dizzy so, if you want to thank me for the neck pain, you can like check out the adverts and stuff, maybe you see something you like, who knows, would be really kind. Thank you in that case. And uh, make sure you uh, do the same on my following videos, recent videos. So here we can see the globe now, getting close to the southern link tunnel, where we're gonna turn in. Uh, 
because we are 4.5 meters high so I don't want to go through the city um, we're gonna go off to the west so it's better to take the a single lane than anyways here oh boy I'm tired I haven't slept like six hours tonight at least I had a good night's sleep I only woke up one time Yesterday I woke up like every hour, didn't ever get in a deep sleep. <coughs> I have so many sleeping problems man, it's crazy. At least it's good that I don't work 5 or 6 in the morning shifts, I work 2 o'clock in the afternoon shifts, which is really nice. So even if I can't sleep, I, I always get at least a few hours. Because I can always sleep uh, during the uh, noon before 12 o'clock, you know. I remember, remember when working day shifts starting 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning and I just couldn't uh, get the sleep I needed them. Sometimes I didn't sleep at all, maybe one hour, two hours, and I worked anyway. And it was horrible. I had to sit like this and just stay 100% focused on the road and drink energy drinks and stuff. It was horrible. So now, now I'm a lot more happier when I have these evening shifts. It suits me a lot better, although it's hard to meet your friends then, because everybody else works day shifts. So I'm kind of lonely now. <laughs> no, not really. But a little bit maybe. So here we go. Down in the tunnel beside Tolotu and the Globe. Tolotu Arena. Taking off my sunglasses. I <laughs> won't see shit otherwise in the tunnels. Dirty windshield. So now we're rolling down here, I released the gas early in 60 and now we're up in 70. Actually might want to turn on the retarder here soon if it rolls too fast. This is uh, Swedish by the way. Where is 
Sweden, if maybe you didn't know, some people might not know to watch my videos. Here we go, putting on the sunglasses. Auto mode. Oh, it's not shifting. Hmm. Nice, powerful Scania, I guess. Usually it shifts down by now. We're at 700, no, 800, 900 RPMs in 60 km an hour here. Pushing it in 12th gear. And Scania, holy crap, you're doing a good job. Now we have a, another huge uphill here. Let's see if it keeps the 12th gear. Uh, either way, it's gonna do it, so I put it into manual just in case. And here it says 50. I don't know. I don't always trust these. Might be uh, that uh, there's an accident, or I don't know. Or it might be wrong. But here it says 50 again. I don't know. So we're still in 12th gear, pushing it now, 1000 RPMs, 70 km an hour. It's dropping down. So I am gonna put into automatic and let's see here should shift down by oh there we go now it shifts to 11th gear 1100 rpms 60 kilometers an hour oh and here is traffic that's why it was 50 oh man what's with this traffic i mean i did not definitely not expect this So dark, holy crap. What's going on? So there that was that was very bad echo driving. I would have no I should have maybe like gone slower for safety um, in case there was traffic here. Because there there I had to brake and I just spilled away lots of diesel there because I didn't have to push it really so much through the uphill so I could have released the gas a lot earlier there but I was talking and stuff so I didn't see the traffic alright now driving in traffic stop how to eco drive in traffic uh, stop like this one well basically it's really easy and very nice with the trucks hello Fredes Man, those are nice, uh, nice job. Just uh, driving around, chilling, and putting up signs. I would really like to try that out. Have a laptop which you can play around with. Wow, look at those! You see those uh, tire bol bolts? They look from from Terminator. Really cool, man. There's a girl in there. I once heard a story from a guy about. A girl driving those kind of Fredes trucks uh, where you just go like in the night and just put up a sign and just protect the road workers. And she actually or he um, slept. He, he or she worked the daytime. Then when he got home, um, took the truck and go to the place and then there he put down the signs and he went to sleep. Slept 8 hours and then, uh, or whatever time, and uh, then returned back home and go to work, daytime work. Now that is not really allowed, because you will be breaking some laws, um, but how about traffic here? Trafikredaktionen på Radio Stockholm. Det här berör trafikanter på E4 Uppsala vägen riktning mot Stockholm. Oh, it's not us. Okay, so... Yeah, so that was... Uh, she, I don't know, she needed money or, or he... So basically worked a daytime job at a, at a 7-Eleven or at a gas station. And then by the night he... Um, or she... Um, slept in the truck by the road and working just to protect their workers you know, like that. so that's that's probably like I don't know how much uh, that person made maybe uh, up to uh, 50 60,000 kroner a month that's like six thousand dollars a month working two jobs like that that's 
one interesting thing to do, but it's not allowed, so I don't think it's allowed, but they can't, they can't really know what you're doing on your free time. Like, it's hard for them to know that you're working. Uh, anyways, uh, echo driving in traffic. You might, you always want to keep a huge distance to uh, everyone in front of you in the lane and keep your eyes long forward if you see they are braking very long up ahead then you need to release the gas very early and then by the time that you arrived to the car in front of you that had braked they might start going again and so you always have this flow you don't have to brake and gas like they do that's why you have the distance So keeping your eyesight long forward is really key to succeed while truck driving. Don't ask by the way what those bumps are, I have no idea what they are for. Take the second exit here soon. Hello, can you guys see me? <laughs> I look funny. GoPro and sunglasses. See they're braking up there, so I don't need to gas here, just release the gas. Maybe even shift down the gear here. Oh look at that tourist boat, cool. And start retarding here. <laughs> retarding, <laughs> funny word huh? Not too hard, but you see now, I can keep my flow here. So they are like gas and brake and gas and brake and I can just go... And you can actually do this in your car as well. Like people might go in in front of you but who cares. It takes maybe a few seconds out of your like uh, arrival time. I'm driving a lot more economically like this. Oh, I want to go out on the sea now. I get so jealous on these guys and their boats. Look at these beautiful houses here, man. I've, been, I've delivered in there. There's a really beautiful area there. Lots of uh, Swedish rich people, I think, live there. Because they're expensive houses. But look at those balconies, man, at the top of that house, man. It's so nice. I just want to be there. Have me a cold beer. Oh crap, didn't look, but it seems like they're gonna go, come on drive, drive, oh, that was pretty good, yeah, at least I didn't have to use the foot brake. So you see it's always good to have a long distance when uh, it's traffic here, it's great. That's getting a turbo sound, it's just epic. It's music for my ears. And probably yours too, who is watching this, I guess. 
maybe I'll do a relaxing drive later going back uh, so stay tuned for that if you want and I'll just name it like turbo sound Scania or something and just not talk at all just record and just drive hopefully I will have a uh, battery left on the GoPro we'll see I've already recorded once a day on the other video where I did a how to drive in the city truck with the Scania P280 this is again a Scania G490 so it's quite a difference this one is 4.5 meters high and that city truck was 2.8 meters high with the race ball roof <sighs> release the gas we have a uh, we have to break here a bit too slow maybe but very economical driving here at least. People behind me are like, come on! A little bit of retarder here, don't want the pallets in the back to fall over. You know, don't go too fast in the corners. Oh, and also on these Scanias, if you're in a downhill and you push the brake and you have the retarder set to automatic mode, it's a little switch here on the gearbox or gearbox lever. You have a little switch, say zero and one, and one is on the automatic mode, and that will make it turn on the retarder when you push the regular foot brake. <clears throat> so you have actually three kind of brakes in this truck. You have this retarder lever, which also engages the engine brake if you have the switch on here. And you have the foot bottom here to the left in the floor and that's only for the engine brake, not the retarder. And then you have the regular foot air controlled pads, brakes, which wear out and are bad for the environment. So we want to try and avoid using them, just only use these health brakes. Wow, people paddling, beautiful day. Yeah, so now we're in a downhill, I can push the brake and this, pushing the brake, now it will not make the truck exceed that speed when I push the brake. So if you, for example, are rolling a bit too fast in the downhill and you don't want to exceed 90 with the trailer or 80, which is the max speed with trailer, then you can simply tap the brake on the Scania's and it will retard the, engage the retarder so it keeps 80 kilometers an hour there. That's a really good, good feature. And if you want it to release, you can just push the gas once or something. Um, come on, stay green, please. Otherwise, you know, these traffic lights are also really hard to um, to work with when echo driving. I'm gonna show you here. We have a lot of traffic lights up ahead. So just cruising in here pretty fast, but it's okay. Oh, they've taken down those uh, things now, you know, in my earlier videos when I was driving here with a 4.5 meter wide truck, I was hitting those things in the roof. So, I'm glad they fixed that now. I did not call and report that, but apparently somebody else did. So, up ahead here we have, oh, there's a traffic light, so you gotta make sure you brake really early here. I'm gonna use, I have to use the foot brake here now. Not really see that coming. And here's a crosswalk, whoop, rolled back there a bit, hope I didn't hit that car in the back, doesn't seem like it, you know, you never know, you can never trust the cars that can go really close to you, so make sure you don't roll back. So here we have a lot of traffic lights for pedestrians, so we want to keep an eye out for pedestrians here to echo drive. So here's no pedestrians that stands and uh, might push the traffic lights uh, buttons. Not not one here and not one over there. It seems all green, so we can just gas it up here and not nobody, no pedestrian over there as well. 
now we're in 50. So you want to keep an eye out for the pedestrians here because also these traffic lights turn red really quickly. They go from green through yellow to red really fast. So it's hard to echo drive them. So the way you have to do it is just keep an eye out for the pedestrians basically. And bicyclers might also push, go faster and push it. Which makes it turn red. No pedestrians here. Nobody over there as well. Oh, there's no. Oh, she's not gonna walk over. All right, now we're good to go here. Now it's green, like way up there. It's green, so it might. So if it's green for a while, it might turn red, you know. So I just gassed up a little bit there, and now we'll see here. I'm gonna go in 50. Get me ready to turn on the brake. No, it's gonna stay green. Yeah. Okay, let's push it. Because these lights, they are yellow a bit here, you see it's yellow a little bit longer, you see. And there it turned red, so that was perfect. Whoops. Watch out you guys, coming through. I don't know what you're doing over there, on the left lane. Going so slowly. Watch out for the plates, man. Plates and the glasses and stuff. That you guys have in the back. <laughs> Not gonna break the porcelain. All right, here. Oh, here's the traffic light. But maybe I shouldn't have gone that fast, but at least now I engine brake earlier. So it's a little bit of waste of fuel there. Oh, it's green. So, but I think it will turn red. I think so. So let's engage the brake here. And it's green. It's green. It's green. Okay. Okay. Nice. Let's go in. But it's good to, you know, engage the help. Oh, there it's turned red, so yeah, my, my calculations was kind of close there. And here, I'm gonna take it right. So basically now, now we're not gonna ride anymore. Uh, oh, there's red. We're not gonna drive that fast now anymore. We've just arrived here now. Just gonna drive in through here and then reverse. Right, my eco driving stats are 18% breakaway energy, and we're in 3.98 liters. I actually made it go down, you guys, with the truck and trailer. That's nice. Now we're in Bruma. There's Bruma blocks, like huge shopping center. And over there we have Sundbyberg, or uh, Sundbyberg, sorry, I, I should not say that in English, man, it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> sounds gay. <laughs> Sundbyberg. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I'm punishing you guys with that word. Okay, finally I can take off my head scrapers. It's killing my head. Oh boy, I'm feeling sick. By the way, when turning very hard like this, make sure you go slowly because uh, you don't want to rip off the tires from the wheels. You can actually do that if you turn around really quickly. So be careful. Gates are closing. Oh no. Too late. <laughs> oh. Sorry, guys. Wrong code. Oh, 
there we go. I have to open up. Of shifting, shifting up the gears here to save a little bit of fuel, you know, so a few drips. <laughs> now I'm gonna have the trailer, I think, in that port number three here. It's gonna be a bit harder. So now we are turning very steeply here, so we're gonna slow down here, crawl gear, C hitch gear. It's really tight in here, man. Holy crap. Do you see how tight that is driving now? If I'm turning too hard now to the left, I might break something. So let's turn it around slowly here. There's the trailer coming around. Oh boy. And I think that's good. Turn off the hill climb holder. I don't like to have that on while reversing. I need to have maximum control here. I think I might do a separate video of this just reversing here. Who knows? We'll see. Like a little how to short clip. Looks good, edge to edge there, and you might want to think of the trailer as you're steering it. Think of the front wheels of the trailer, like that's the way you should think. I heard a guy in the comments saying it really made him easy, made him understand everything then when I said that. So when you see that the trailer is straight towards the board, you want to start aligning the front wheels of the trailers. Also, it's straight, like now it's getting to be straight, almost, so then you want to, that's, in that way the trailer will go straight back. So think of the trailer like you're driving the trailer, not the truck. Now, I might want to go out and open up the doors first. And we have a trailer, or we have some sort of thing there on the other side. sure don't hit that thing on the other side so I can't see what's on the right side there you see now I won't be able to open up the doors so I'm gonna go out and open up the doors now and I'll leave you guys in here and I'll show you the rest so stick tight maybe I'll edit this out or not we'll see one sec you might wonder why I kept the engine idling well it's because I have freezed goods so and I was pretty fast here so I wanted it to keep cooling down the goods so now let's continue here Open up the doors and also now when reversing make sure you do not brake hard because especially now we're in a downhill so we don't want to brake so hard and then maybe all the goods in the back will fall out like slide out who knows it can actually happen I'm not so sure about this but we'll see here 
Oh crap. I can't see. I can't see. I think that's too close. Hold on. I'm gonna go out and check. That's way too... Uh, that's not good at all. You, you would want to reverse so that you can see everything in the left mirror. Now I'm watching here in the left mirror or the right mirror and it's very hard like this. And oh, there we go. Right. Now that's perfect, I think right. No wait, we're just gonna go forwards a bit. Now we can check out the right left mirror, which is the right mirror to check out. <laughs> the left is the right, and the right is the wrong. Oh, we're too close there, I don't want to break the door, so we want to have this perfect here. A little bit more. There we go. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out the adverts. Maybe see something you like and uh, like this video. Share it 